The term body positivity has become a hot topic in conversations socially and in the media. But what is body positivity? A movement started in 1996 called the Body Positivity Movement that encourages people to adopt more forgiving and affirming attitudes towards their bodies with the goal of improving overall health and well-being. Whether people are nurturing their bodies and maintaining their weight or finding a place in life where they are comfortable through working out or changing their lifestyles to find a better attitude. A lot has changed in the past 20 years and the term body positivity isn't just focused to weight issues. Individuals now think about their body hair, freckles, big, small, short and tall. More than 10,000 women and girls were questioned as part of the Dove Beauty and Confidence Reports, which took answers from candidates aged between 10 to 60 and from 13 different countries around the world. For Australia, the data revealed that on a global level, we are on par with the UK in terms of body positivity confidence ratings, with just 20% admitting having higher self-esteem. More alarmingly, approximately 91% of women are unhappy with their bodies, and only 5% of women naturally possess body type often portrayed by Americans in the media. Where is all the body positivity support for men? Andrew Whalen, the president of National Association for Males with Eating Disorder states, we're seeing a significant rise in body loathing in men. For many men who have body issues, it turns to substance abuse and self-loathing. Men are not given permission to express themselves. We're taught that if we react at all, we are to react with anger. Let's look into some statistics on females and male body positivity issues. Teenage boys are on average three to five body positive than teenage girls. But worryingly, a very high percentage of all teenagers have been body shamed, with 64% of teenage boys saying they have experienced body shaming and an enormous 94% of teenage girls reporting they have. Let's find out what individual thoughts are on body positivity. Um, I suppose it wouldn't, doesn't really matter what part about your body. I, I would take it as physical appearance and um, being cool with it, really, in yourself. Uh, uh, irrelevant of what part of physical we're talking about. Being positive about your body, feeling good about yourself, I guess. <laughs> I guess it's everything and, and about your style as well and about, you know, how, yeah, hair. For me, it's very much about the hair. Being positive about yourself and your body. Probably a couple of years ago, before I got my teeth done, I had really bad teeth and I was smoking and I was overweight. Not really bad, but yeah. Because I got a lot of shit when I was little, like permanent shit, really, because of redhead and left-handed and freckles and all that sort of stuff so I struggled a lot with that when I was really young like hectic, hectically sort of from as soon as kids could start teasing you so by the time I got to high school I'd I, basically I was over that um, it was more about fitting in then and, and, and social stuff that I was worried about than what I looked like. I didn't really give a fuck about it. But then 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 I suppose after after school it, it it started to matter again then. But still never so seriously because I suppose by then my personality had developed enough that I really didn't care. And like I say, because there is there still is this ranger thing, you know. It's a cool joke, and we all love it. But when when you're young for a redhead, it does mean you you deal with a lot of stuff a lot earlier because you do get smashed for this thing that's not even real, you know. Now I'm older. There's heaps of people who are totally jealous of my hair, and I can do cool things with it, but <laughs> other people can't, you know. But when you're young, it's t it's it's not even explained. It's just you're the odd one out. You're the one. So, I reckon that's helped me, I suppose, in a way, getting smashed when I was younger, because 
it was about something irrelevant that I can't change, that, that doesn't matter, that's actually a unique feature, but that got me to realise so that none of the other shit does. When I was a teenager, there's a lot of pressure when you're a teenager and I was a bit bigger and after I had my daughter, just, you know, that extra weight, I guess, it's a lot tied into weight for me. When I was younger, I got teased a lot at school for being fat. Probably now. Um, I've recently quit smoking and lost weight. And got a girlfriend who tells me I look good. Um, probably in my mid twenties, I'd say I was really, you know, fit. I was riding a lot, and um, I was. Yeah, feeling good about myself. My hair was amazing. <laughs> when I was really skinny, and I had no weight, that was good. The thing is, just um, it doesn't matter if you're female or male. Yeah, I think. Well, there's a lot of um competitive kind of attitude. The transgender and LGBTI communities also have body positivity issues, as Huffington Post reports. Gay men display significant rates of body dissatisfaction, body image disturbances and disorders to a degree that closely aligns with those of straight women and individuals who are sexually involved with men, furthermore, tend to be more focused on appearance due to the common belief that men place higher priority on a partner's physical form than women. Meg Zolch states, as a trans person, mainstream body positivity seems to invalidate my gender dysphoria. A feeling that doesn't quite mesh with all bodies are good bodies or love the skin you're in mentalities. The more I consume mainstream body positivity media, which is largely dominated by cis people, the more I grow confused about how I should and shouldn't feel about my breasts and vagina. Let's get a better perspective on body positivity issues that gay and trans communities suffer. What is body positivity? Hmm, I feel like body positivity is um, a deep, and like wholesome comfortability in in your physical self, and I feel like it, um, it yeah, it extends to your whole physical being. I think there's there's different different times where we feel more positive and and positive about our bodies than than others. Um, but yeah, being body positive um, speaks of of that level of comfortability and. Um, yeah, I suppose a, a good feeling, a good association with with your physical self. Body positivity is the idea of actually being positive about your body. And I know that is a weird way of putting it, but ultimately it's not feeling shame when you look yourself in the mirror. And for some people that's impossible. I know it was for me for a long time. When did I feel the most negative about my body? It was about from age 6 to 31. That, that small period of time was probably when I felt the most negative about my body. Now, as a trans girl, there's all kinds of extra shit that you have to deal with. like. There were times before I transitioned where I'd see girls on the street and feel nothing but envy. But the problem was that even after transitioning, I didn't have body positivity. Because I was, in my own view, this fucking hybrid monster. And I could not deal with that particular situation. And so I transitioned and like, God, I would have been 24, but it took me another six or seven years to even feel anything positive about my body. And those, they were really depressing times. 
When did I feel the most positive about my body? Anything. Well, it only really happened two years ago. And I mean, part of it was I lost a bit of weight, but I'd lost weight previously to that and it hadn't changed anything. But strangely, what changed it was porn. And I know that's weird to say because a lot of the time the cultural idea of porn gives horrible things that people can't live up to and makes them think I'm inadequate because porn quite frankly is fake, but it wasn't mainstream porn, it was the porn that the trans girls were doing all over the internet. Not just like filmed porn, but drawn porn. This, this idea that they were celebrating their own body with the kind of dimorphism of the, the female figure with the male genitalia. It was being celebrated and engaging in that community and finding people who thought it was great and attractive. It kind of changed everything. And I mean, both of my girlfriends, oh, Polly, by the way, just um, both of my girlfriends do something to do with porn. My girlfriend in Brisbane shoots her own porn, shows it on the internet, and my girlfriend in Melbourne, she basically just draws porn for a living. Like, essentially hentai. And it's that, that openness, that that's all okay, that made it positive. It was no longer a closed circle. It was an open welcoming one and to find people in that same position, it kind of changed everything. I'm 38, um, just turned 38, and I've got two children who are 12 and nine, and um, this juncture in my life, um, I definitely feel the most body positive I've ever felt, and which is quite, quite interesting how that's come about because it's come from you know, me having a set of life circumstances that lined up that mean that at the moment um, I'm carrying the most weight in kilos than I've, than I've ever ca carried. I've got serious junk in the trunk. I've got a lot of booty. Um, I've got heaps more boobs than I would normally have. <laughs> but that's also come with, with putting on weight. And um, so I, you know, as that sort of happened, I, I you know, rationalised it to myself and was a little bit like, oh, well, you know, I've had a pretty tough time with my emotional health, so I haven't been so physical and giving all these reasons as to why I'd put on this weight. Um, and then what has sort of evolved in this time is that I have had more offers to use my physical body to perform, to host, to um, basically get my body out. I've had more offers of experience to do that since I've been heavier than I've ever had in my life. Which is really quite, which is really quite amazing and really helpful in that I realised, um, yeah, that I was a little bit resistant to that. You know, I was a little bit like, oh, I just didn't expect that. I think some of that old sort of mentality of, of needing to be, you know, trim and toned and and all of that kind of stuff would somehow be more appealing. But as it turns out, me being you know, in my body and being accepting of my body and loving it um, is actually, like, you know, hugely attractive. <laughs> so, yeah, I would say now is definitely the most body positive I've ever been. I don't think that the society really cares so much. <laughs> I don't think that, I guess, other people don't really care as much as you do about your own body image and um, I guess there's a lot of pressure for people to be the right kind of weight and, and you know have um, to fit in especially with style like clothes, clothing style fit in with you know certain groups or conform. Yeah well always you know before I go out I want to make sure I look the way that I think looks good also, the way I think society is going to perceive that I look good. How do I feel society affects views on my body? It fucking sucks. Like, it's just shit. The, the most upsetting 
effect that culture and society has had on me is things like Family Guy that has a whole scene, a whole series of scenes where the idea is there is what looks like a woman and they have a penis and so everyone vomits. Like, that is, that is hideously, hideously terrible for body positivity. The, the whole gag idea of that, the whole idea of the, the trap, all of that is just such a negative weight to put on body positivity for trans girls. And it happens all the time. I've got, so I'm on OkCupid because occasionally I want random hookups. Sue me. Um, one of the guys messaged me yesterday and he was like, hey, do you want to hook up? I want to experience what it's like to be gay but be able to deny it later. Like, go fuck yourself, dude. I don't give a shit. You don't want to, you want to deny your inner feel? I'm, I'm not interested. That kind of thing from society is just a constant negative pressure on body positivity because I don't want to be seen as a guy who's tricking someone. I don't want to be seen as anything but what I am. And society as a whole, it doesn't work with that. I mean, me and my girlfriends, it would be nice if we could wear things that maybe traditionally a lot of girls wear pencil skirts, bikinis, but you better believe that if we were to do something like that and we were seen with like some kind of fucking bulge down there, there would be people up in arms in the streets. Like it would be ridiculous and dangerous. Two weekends ago, a guy like went for me at a train station screaming lady boy. And if it wasn't for the fact that I have relatively fast reaction time because I constantly am doing sword fighting shit, I would not have been able to avoid that and it would have been a terrible time. And you know what? No one would have stepped in either. It's happened before. But society does not judge me in a positive light and I constantly have that on my mind. The biggest one is society and the redhead you know, I joke about it but I, I, I also reckon there's a bit of truth in my statement that the la Rangerism is like the last acceptable form of racism because if you substitute any Ranger joke or any name that I get called or any of the stuff that happens about it with any other race word it would be like a shit story even, even if you put in block if you talk about someone else's hair colour, blondes is not, not fair game anymore. Rangers still is, which is crazy. I mean, it's probably because Rangers can handle it. But, yeah, absolutely huge in terms of shaping the whole body, the whole personality, everything is, is that for me. To the point that it's not worth going into anything else. More than 70% of women want the media to portray a diverse range of physical appearance, age, race, shape, gender and size in advertising and marketing. Let's find out from our members of the public if the media has had an influence on their body positivity image. A fair bit, I guess. There's so many products for, you know, for losing weight and for, you know, all these things to make you look nice. And so you see that stuff and it's, even if it's not a conscious thing that you're doing, it's, it's chipping away at people's perceptions of themselves. Hard to say, I suppose when I... When I was living city mode, um, you know, in big cities and, in, and, and watching telly and wearing suits and stuff, I had, I, uh, I had a different view of what it meant to be positive about it, what it meant to look good. Um, kind of almost the opposite view to what I have now. So, I suppose that's media, but more like the entire package of which part of society you decide you're going to clock into. And really that still was about me coming to terms with my own positivity anyway, because that's still me trying to fit into some other thing. Now I can go see more of it. Yeah. You know, like whether it be through like 
uh, magazines or on television or more so now for young people in the internet. But I was exposed to images of women and of humans in general that were not necessarily um, real and <laughs> weren't actually like, um, you know, uh, uh, an accurate uh, depiction of that person um, physically. And that might simply be from, you know, like not, you know, a, a photograph of a girl in a dolly magazine having her skin airbrushed because she's 16 and more than likely she's probably got pimples, but you're not going to see that in that magazine. Um, yeah, so I think that you, from a young age we're getting fed these messages and sometimes they're subtle and sometimes they're really insidious, you know, and um, I think that, yeah, our society has a lot, has a lot to answer for. Um, and in turn I think that, you know, we as women – um, have, you know, a responsibility within that when we are, when we are being fed that or shown that or subtly being programmed to believe those things, we, it gives us like sort of almost more, more opportunity and more ownership to actually, um, you know, call bullshit on that stuff and really look at what your, you know, what you as a, as a woman, what is your personal benchmark, you know, what is, what is, how do you feel about your body and your physical being? Yeah, I guess you've got all the ads and saying you need to look like this and look like that and yes. How do I feel that media affects my views on body positivity? See the last question. It's culture and media are so firmly intertwined. One of the things that I was told when I first started seeing psychologists as part of the gatekeeping program to stop trans girls from just taking anything they want was a test that they kind of put me under and it was there's a couple of high school kids and they see you on the street and they start mocking you and throwing things at you what do you do and my response was scare them off run away I don't know, what if they get in a fist fight? And the psych was like, if you get in a fist fight with these high school kids, you will be demonized because the paper will have something along the lines of man beats up high school kids the next day. You have to believe that this is the way they will treat it because the trans community is alien to the most, to most of the rest of culture and media. And if there's something that media loves doing, it's either showing these poor people who need help or saying, look at these monsters, we were right. That's the two things they do the best. And that's what we're constantly afraid of. Like as a teacher, as someone in a position of responsibility over molding people's future, I have to be really careful because I don't just have that responsibility, but I also have the horrifying media stories if something would go wrong for me and how it would reflect on the whole trans community instantly. It wouldn't be good. It would be a shit show. And that's just what I have to be careful of. Mainstream media is hearing the call. Christian Serrano proves yet again plus size fashion is catwalk worthy at New York Fashion Week. He is a designer that creates beauty for all people. Other female body positive models include Shay Neely and Ghostbusters actress Leslie Jones. IMG models last year seemed to break new ground by signing Zach Miko, the first in newly formed male plus size models. However, this company chose to label this division Brawn, a descriptor as rooted in masculinity as it is body type. The message was clear, men can be plus size and attractive, but only if they can be considerably desirably masculine. Furthermore, Miko is not the only man on the roster. Other male body positive models include Kelvin Davis and Troy Solomon. Transgender spokesperson for body positivity, Sam Dylan Finch, is an associate editor at Resist and the founder of Let's Queer Things Up a blog exploring the intersections of queerness and mental illness. As a neurodiverse transgender writer, Sam is passionate about amplifying the voices of marginalised people, as well as drawing from his lived-in experience to educate and empower. She 
stop watching telly. Period. Bullshit. Everyone is totally sexy in the way to be sexy. And, well, you don't have to be sexy to be positive, but I reckon sexiness is basically what breeds around positivity and sexiness. Hot. Uh, sexiness is loving what you look like. That is what looks hot to anyone else. It's that combination of being totally in your own skin. It, it, it's not, oh, you have to look like X, Y, Z. You know, there's, there's hot people in every subset of every type of body, and it's people who have got fucking vibe and are into it and are body positive. Body positivity basically is sexiness. It's really hard with the media the way it is, and people are trying to make money out of stuff, but it's, uh, I guess it comes from in the home, like really empowering your kids to feel good. It, it's really hard because when we feel bad about ourselves, we can talk about stuff that, you know, kids pick up on and they, and it's, it's really hard to be completely, you know, accepting of yourself and then pass that on to your kids to be totally accepting of themselves. And I guess, yeah, it comes down to being really supportive and loving of everyone around us. You're beautiful. Everyone's so beautiful and it doesn't matter what you look like, you know. It's about what's inside and, and you can be positive about who, who you are, how you feel, then you'll look more beautiful on the outside too. Mm, I think as a whole society... Um yeah, that's a big question. I mean, it's different for everybody, you know, each person it's really different. But um, I feel like, um, you know, those subliminal messages and that kind of imprinting, it starts really early. It starts early on, you know, and um, I think us really looking at not just as women, as humans, like those those moments when when you're young and you might you know be starting to develop or change from from a, a young you know a little person into a teenager or you know what is what is being said what are we what are we teaching what are we sharing what are we showing you know and I think that you know silence breeds shame so like I feel like if people don't talk about something we learn that we don't talk about it and therefore if we have something to say about that it's not valid and it's not important and I think that yeah the same thing sort of applies like we make a lot of assumptions as to you know um how people perceive stuff or we just assume that they don't have wounding or don't have bits of them that are armored because you know, because they've been traumatised or they've been treated badly or they've been, you know, compared or contrasted in their physical self. So I think as a society, you know, and, and our communities within our greater society, like we really need to start looking at where that's happening and intercept intercept it with, because there's always an opportunity. We reframe it rather and we flip it. There's always an opportunity, even in a really negative experience. There's an opportunity for growth, for understanding and for you know, making it more positive the next time. So I think that if we can really start to actually look at that stuff at a more grassroots kind of young level, you know, when it when it really starts to happen and um, yeah, start to look at look at how we how we approach that and how we support it and, and yeah, what we're essentially teaching, you know, our young people I think is is, is really important. How can we be more positive about our bodies? Everyone requires a different thing to be positive about their bodies. For some people, it's external validation. I know that some people like posting pictures of themselves on the internet and the feedback that they get from other people, that generates a positivity about their body, people appreciating it. But it's important to understand that that, and what I mentioned before about media representation, that's not the only path. Everyone has a slightly different path, and ultimately, the path that actually reaches you and makes you feel positive about yourself is your path. You can't just take someone else's path and expect to get the same results. You might, but that's not everyone.
you need to find people who find you attractive. You need to find people who think you're great. And even the most depressed person, over a long period of time with those wonderful supporters, sometimes that's what you need, and eventually the message gets through. I know to an extent that's what happened with me. I, I run an online community full of trans girls and, let's say, less attractive gay men. That is a mean thing to say, but that is ultimately... They're, pe they're people who don't usually fit into the main places that you would find people like this in society. And we're very supportive. Like, we have, we have a channel called Selfies and Inspiration, and the whole point of it is people post selfies of themselves, and then everyone else kind of goes, that is a fucking killer outfit. Oh my god, those leggings are amazing. When did you get those boots? And it's just, it's a channel for positivity, and it works wonders for some of the people that post in it. And everyone feels comfortable posting in it, because there's never been a bad word said. Mainly because there's three of us who watch over the whole thing with a ban hammer held ready, waiting to squash the face of anyone who dares defy us. But also because it's just generally a positive place. And that, that can help. That can, that can change everything. Well, I guess I'm not worrying about it so much. But that's a very... It sounds like a bit of an impossible thing, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure, really. What's the final message I can leave for other people about body positivity? I mean, essentially, it all comes down to fuck the haters. Like, you be you. There's gonna be people who find something nice in you. They're, they're gonna appreciate you, they're gonna appreciate your body, and Ultimately, even those people don't matter. What matters is what you feel here. And that requires you to have that positive feelings coming towards you. Finding a community of like-minded people, finding a group of friends. Some of the least body positive people that I know, the issue that they have is they don't have community. And building community is incredibly important. Building that, that kind of friend network, that group where you feel that you can share and talk about shit and people will listen. Body positivity is kind of part of overall mental health. And if you can't deal with the rest of the mental health, then your body positivity is always going to have a problem. You need to be able to feel happy to feel happy about yourself. Don't think bad about yourself. Don't care what others think. Sexiness is loving what you look like. That is what looks hot to anyone else. It's that combination of being totally in your own skin. It, it, it's not, oh, you have to look like X, Y, Z. You know, there's, there's hot people in every subset of every type of body, and it's people who have got fucking vibe and are into it and are body positive. Body positivity basically is sexiness. You're beautiful. Everyone's so beautiful and it doesn't matter what you look like, you know, it's about what's inside and, and you can be positive about who, who you are, how you feel, then you'll look more beautiful on the outside too. My final message would be like to all humans in our community to actually um, jump on board with, with becoming more body positive, you know, be real with yourself and look at those spots where you might you know, shame yourself or, or disrespect yourself or and also like look at those spots in your physical self where you would like to maybe feel stronger or healthier or have more curve or feel more confident to shake your booty on a dance floor or, you know, like let someone see that you happen to have silvery stretch marks on your legs in summer or wherever it is and Find, you know, find those, find those little spots and, you know, really work out how, how you can, you know, really, I suppose, foster more love and acceptance 
and care, you know, for, for your physical self and all of the all of the amazing stuff that our bodies can actually do. Body positivity is unlearning the idea that only certain bodies are worth acceptance and praise and instead recognising that all bodies are equally valuable. It is deciding what feels good and healthy for you personally and letting other people do so for them. It's understanding that you deserve to live in your body without receiving the prejudice of others, whether that means rude comments, reduced economy opportunity, inadequate healthcare, or something else. And working towards a world where no one's body is the target of such bias. We are all the same, free the shame.